I love the process of writing and creating demos, and I end up sitting with those a lot. But with this specific record, I was really into the idea of bringing a producer on at the end. Um, and I was really into the idea of these songs kind of transforming and changing as they wanted to. The theme of this album is a lot about transformation. So I think musically it made sense. And we got into the studio with producer Dave Siddick and they went from these kind of like rock demos into a more electronic world um, within his space. And yeah, it's just kind of allowing, like I said, the record to kind of be what it wants to be is important to me. And this one felt like it wanted to lean more kind of electronic, a little bit more of that trip hop influence that I've dabbled with over the years. But. Like I said, I wanted a producer for this one. I, I, um, I would have brought one in earlier on, but it was you know a pandemic record, so we had a lot more time than expected to work on the writing and um, the demos. So I think in that sense, when you do have a lot of time to sit with the demos, sometimes it's, it can be hard to then give them over to someone and hear all the changes. But um, again, I don't know, something about this place in my life and kind of what this record is about Thematically, it just felt right and it felt good for the songs to take such a transformation. I got sober from alcohol in early 2021 and I had already started this record. So it's interesting to kind of hear this, the songs that I started before that and the way that they changed and like the songs that I wrote after. Um, but that created a lot of openness and clarity in my life and my creativity that I just was then naturally channeling into this music and so it yeah it became a lot about rebirth and then the interesting thing about these songs is that I would write a song about some kind of rebirth or letting go or transformation and then I would immediately find myself in that same situation of needing to actually let go <laughs> and transform my life and so I had to make a lot of like really powerful decisions during this process and move forward from a lot of things and I was recognizing a lot more of like what was toxic in my life uh, within myself with you know relationships and so on and so yeah I had to actually take these songs into action and so when I'm talking about cutting the cord it's like I was actually doing that in my life as well. I spent a lot of time with my grandmother growing up and she did kind of open me up to the concept of there being more than just this physical space of the spiritual realm. And, you know, it started with simple things like aromatherapy and flower essences and energy work and stuff like that. But I think over time that did, you know, just, yeah, leave me like more um, curious and open to this other realm and incorporating that into my music. Um, something that I've talked about a lot too is sleep paralysis and, um, I'm not sure that that's specifically like a spiritual thing, but I think sometimes it can feel that way. And that sort of, yeah, feeling of these like, you know, dream creatures in the room with you after you're awake, that, that also sort of opened me up to other realms. And so I put a lot of that into my music. And um, <clears throat> yeah, I, I think that over the years, as I've embraced a path of witchcraft and following the cycles of the seasons and the cycles of the moon, I've put that into my writing process a lot and I've started to share that more because it's just been like so such a positive wonderful thing in my life and mm -hmm. just as a person and as a creative and um, mm -hmm. one of the main things is just really simple like kind of creating a container you know <laughs> like setting the space and setting the intention maybe pulling a tarot card just for some sort of I don't know clarity and guidance on like what I'm going to write about at that moment mm -hmm. I do want it to be known that it's like a very joyful thing, you know, and everyone practices differently. And just because someone practices witchcraft doesn't mean that they're going to resonate with everybody else who does that. You know, it's not um, witchcraft in itself isn't a religion, you know, it's, it's not like we all gather somewhere. <laughs> so there are communities within that and people that resonate with each other. And that's really wonderful. But, um, but yeah, I try to put a positive light on that because again, it's been such a positive thing for me personally. And it's been a really big part of my healing process along with traditional modalities like therapy and things like that yeah yeah i worked with uh tyler bates on that who is you know a veteran of that that world music cinematic world um 
and I had collaborated on something with him before, so he invited me in to do the X soundtrack with him. And my main job for that was vocalizations and vocals, and it was just so interesting, such a great learning process to work on this. Um, I was giving sort of like a theme and vocals to like the two main characters, and it pulled a lot of new sounds out of me, to be honest. You know, like I was I was given tasks of like making like growling sounds or la or like laughter or even like sexual sounds, which was really, really vulnerable, you know? And um, I kind of felt good about it. Like once I sent it off, I was like, okay, I'm over that now. I need to stop being embarrassed about this, you know? And yeah, I think that kind of opened me up vocally to kind of be more vulnerable and raw and like experiment a little bit more with my voice. To be honest, I think when I was younger, I had to kind of like put the blinders on a little bit to a lot of it. And that was just like my coping mechanism was to like not even really <laughs> let myself notice that kind of, you know, sort of uns any unspoken like misogyny that was happening. I think I was just like, all right, I'm just going to focus on <laughs> the task at hand and keep moving forward. But yeah, then I, I think I just kind of created my own self-concept and I don't feel like it had a lot to do with gender you know for me and like there's kind of this in-between space that I've existed in um, within myself and within my music I think that my music doesn't exactly fit in one you know specific genre or space and I think kind of like my my being doesn't really either <laughs> so yeah I'm kind of comfortable like in the in the in-between and like the liminal between things but um you know, I notice it and uh, just try to, at this point, would say something if something was happening, but I've been surrounding myself with really good people who are respectful, so. I've been very lucky within like the licensing world where we've gotten a lot of placements that have helped pay the bills that also feel aligned and like I haven't felt uncomfortable about any of the since we've gotten or anything like that um, and I also think it's obviously more normalized now that bands are going to do like you know maybe your song will be in a commercial here and there because it, it helps cover expenses because everything is really expensive now like to tour um, I don't know I mean I just I don't know I, I try to live simply and like not have to do things that I don't feel like are aligned just for money you know I mean there's been like collaborations that I've been asked to do and that I you know, felt like just weren't right for me and maybe it would have given me a lot of exposure or more payment down the line, but I just felt like I want to, yeah, stay aligned in my vision and I don't know, again, I just feel like all these things I'm saying, it's like obviously I'm in a privileged place and I've had record labels and, and people kind of like helping me along over the years as well, so I recognize that, but I was doing it on my own for a very long time as a young person as well, so I know that it takes time to build all of this and, you know, yeah. eventually get to that point.